to St. Andrew's Church, Miss Reverend Reese, if you'll come up, we'll do the prayer and then we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. If everybody will please stand. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do humbly come before you thanking you for all your many blessings. We thank you for this opportunity for the City Council to gather to address the needs of our city. Lord, they have such a great responsibility. Open their hearts and minds to see clearly the work that lies before them. Dear God, please guide them in the management of our city that they will work for the well-being of all the people of our city, both civilian and military. Please lead and guide them to protect our natural resources of land, air, and water. And please guide them to make wise use of our financial resources. Help us, dear Lord, to support our city council with our prayers and in our actions. Dear Lord, bless us and keep us safe during our city's upcoming festivities and in all the days and years to come. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we do humbly pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for those prayers. Thank you, Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have a roll call vote, Madam Clerk. Mayor Allen. Here. Mayor President Here. Councilmember Williams. Here. Councilmember Bravo. Here. Councilmember Stephen. Here. Councilmember Foster. Present. Councilmember Hamilton. We're all here. Next, we have the approval of the minutes from the regular meeting of August 1st, 2016, and a regular meeting of August 15th, 2016, for adoption. <coughs> Move to adopt. Second. Any discussion? All those say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next, we have a public comment period. If anybody in the audience would like to come up and speak for up to three minutes, we have a three minute time limit. Now would be your time. Would anybody like to speak? Yes, sir. If you would, sir, please give uh, the clerk your name and address. Good evening, sir. Council members, my name is Harold Isler. I'm a retired police major with the city of Goldsboro, 26 years. I uh, was online looking last night, and I see where you're advertising for a police major's position at $63,000 to $100,000. They won't pay that kind of money when I was here. <laughs> but I'm wondering why we're advertising outside rather than looking at what we got on the inside of our police department. We're in trouble. We got 15 black officers, one Hispanic down there. Eight of the black officers are specialized. They do crime prevention, things like that. The other seven are on the street. We have got to have officers. And I don't mean from Seymour Johnson, I mean from the city, the county here, we need officers. We need people that's going to stay here for 20 years, for 30 years, and, and retire. We don't need anybody. We're going to be here for 30 minutes and, and go. We sure don't. Because I gave the best years of my life to this city. There was a number of other ones have retired. You got four or five going to retire coming up within the next two or three months. So how are we going to replace them when we're already 18 down? So I see the little advertisements in the paper. We're going to have a job fair on the 14th. I need for Chief West to find an individual in his police department that will get out and go to recruiting. Somebody that loves their job, that can go out here and talk to these colleges, these high school students, somebody, and get them in here so we can get them prepared. Because we have got to have it. There's no doubt about it. So if you will, y'all take it in consideration and think about it because, like I said, I'm too old now. Can't do it again. But uh, I appreciate the city giving me the opportunity to do that. Sure enough. Thank you. First off, I want to thank you for your service to our city. Thanks, when you were here, we very much appreciate that. And secondly, I don't, is Chief West here? 
I don't know if, if Chief's here, but I can tell you that Scott and Chief and I and all of us, we hear everything you say. Right. We, we, we're working on it very hard, and I think in the next six months you'll see some significant right. changes. But we I'm, need it. I'm going to stay here. I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to be right here. We want you, we want you to stay right here, and you can come up every month right. and tell us that we're doing better right. or worse. But I, I've been, we're I've been all in this together. I've been holding back for just about 20 years, <laughs> but I, I, I got fed up. I sure have. No doubt about it. So. Well, well, we hope you, you don't take another 20 years to come back. How about right. that? Thank you. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Would anybody else like to speak? Yes, sir. Or is that a, is that a sir or a man? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I just saw a hand. Good evening. Good evening. I believe I know most of you up here. Uh, my name is Francine Smith. I've been a citizen of Goldsboro for 27 years. I selected this place to move to and to raise my children. I raised them and then I told them they couldn't stay here. They had to go somewhere else because it wasn't the environment for them to stay. And they have. I've raised two sons. One lives in Maryland and one in Houston. Uh, I've raised my nieces and all but two. There were six all total, but all but two have left as well. And I fear for those who stay. I fear for them because of the crime in the city. It has gotten, <laughs> it has just really gotten out of hand. In my community where I live, we started a neighborhood watch. We've met with some of you about that. Um, we are constantly told, if you see something, say something. And when we see something and say something, nothing changes. <laughs> and it's frustrating. It's frustrating for us as citizens in the community when we're constantly told that the police want to help us and we tell them how and nothing is still done. It's very, very frustrating. I, as I prepared for this today, I looked at a neighborhood data site that ranked Goldsboro at two, at the bottom 2% of cities in the nation. I, I can't even understand how that could possibly be possible. But our violent crime rate in this city is out of control. I know that we just had an unfortunate incident with a young man that was killed downtown. We spent a lot of money downtown, but the surrounding areas around downtown, the areas around the city of Goldsboro, the activity that's going on is now seeping in to where you want to protect it. But if you don't address the issues that are going on all around it, it's going to get worse. So what issues am I talking about? Our kids have no jobs. They don't have job. We have no job training programs, none in this city. We have nothing to prepare them. We have no jobs for them. We have no, no activities for them. And then we wonder why they're on the street doing the things that they're doing. We have to do better about purposely doing better about solving crime. It's not just about putting criminals in jail. It's about getting to the root of the issue. And I don't believe that we spend enough time getting to the root of the issue. I know that, well. You can finish. Thank you. I know that um, our governor has given us additional funding to help with crime after the incident downtown. I would hope that the city council will use some of that funding to address the root cause of issues in the city of Goldsboro and not just arrest criminals, but keep our young people from becoming criminals. 
I have a good relationship with our police department. I work with them. I'm on the GPAC committee, and I, I think it's important to continue that kind of work. But we've got to do something different in our community to get our young people off the street, employed, and being productive citizens in the city. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Smith, Francine Smith. I'm Shirley Edwards. I'm sure all of you know who I am. On September 29th, Wages, the North Carolina Partnership for Children, Dr. Taylor, North Carolina Child, all of us will be having a forum to discuss the opportunities for the children of Wayne County in the future. Now, if we don't address the problems of the county and the city, there will be no need for us to plan for the future because the very children that we plan for in these forums that Dr. Taylor works with, that wages the North Carolina child work with, are the children of poverty. And they are the children that are the parents of poverty. They are the children of generations of poverty. And I sat and listened to us talk about grants for historic preservation, for downtown revitalization, for parks and everything. <coughs> but we never talk about grants for the hardcore unemployed, retraining these people. These are high school dropouts. We talk about the crime on the street, poverty, lack of education, housing. It's some of the root causes of poverty on the street. Folks, the folks you see standing on the street all night, many of them are homeless. These young boys have no homes. They have been rooted out of the projects, justifiably, but they don't have any homes. There are houses here, older people will let them lay on the floor at their house late at night so that they can get off the street for a few minutes. We can chart the crime that doesn't happen when they're off the street. I have that kind of information because I'm not new at this. I've been doing this for years. But until we begin to look at how we can get them trained and unemployed, you're not going to erase crime. No city, no nation has ever done it. Give it some thought. I come tonight for some fruit for thought. Well, tell tell us about the meeting now, September 29th. When September the 29th from 5 to 8 at Wages. Come, we're providing dinner and input to help us plan for the children of poverty. Thank you, Ms. Edwards. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes. Yes, sir. Hi. Um, my name is Melissa Watkins. I'm here with the uh, Wayne County Veterans and Patriots Coalition, nonprofit organization here in the county. Um, I just wanted to make a general announcement. It's a small segment of the population. Um, however, on the 6th of October, we are having our stand down for homeless veterans at Herman Park Center. Uh, it encompasses Wayne County and some folks from Lenore and from Wilson County. In conjunction with um, NC Works, they uh, get together, bring folks in from those counties. We give them health care, uh, a little bit of health care, their, um, their North Carolina ID if they so desire. Uh, they will be seen by um, Salvation Army. Uh, we bring in uh, clothing. They get their amount of clothing that, that, that they need for the winter. We provide them with our, we get a little bit of, a, of some money from, um, oh golly, I can remember who it was from. Anyway, we buy them sleeping bags and uh, clothing, you know, undergarments, uh, and get them set for the next year and try to provide them housing. We cook them up with uh, family endeavors for housing, um, try to get them back on the right course. Right. So I just wanted to make What's that announcement. Day? 6th of October. Is there a time? 9 to 2. Herman Park Center. And it's for veterans. Okay. Try to uh, take care of that. Thank, Thank you. you. Buttons, I appreciate it. Would anybody else like to speak? On yes, ma'am.
Good evening. Hello. Good evening. So my name is Hildegard Fawcett, okay. and today I would like to talk about the topic of skateboarding in Goldsboro. Okay. Um, I want to start off with, you know, the saying, whatever you do, do it downtown. <laughs> and I come downtown a lot, and yeah. I love to skateboard downtown. I feel safe downtown, and I feel like we should have the same rights as bicycles do because it's also a mode of transportation. We're not asking to ride on the sidewalks. So we'd like to be able to just ride in the road and in the bike lanes while obeying traffic laws. And I think we kind of help as a kind of like a community watch too since we're down here all the time we kind of keep an eye on everything and also we bring business down here I know the people I skateboard with at least we'll do a couple laps and then if we're hungry or thirsty we'll go into one of the establishments and eat or drink and then keep skateboarding and we hang out down here a lot and I think we should be able to keep riding and I'm asking you to push the hold the vote on the ordinance on that and also I would also like to talk about expanding the skate park that we have because it's definitely not big enough for the population of Goldsboro, and I think we should definitely add more conf concrete square footage to it. And also, I've been hearing that the ramps have been deteriorating, which is fine for the more experienced skateboarders, obviously, they can handle it, but you also have a lot of young kids going out there trying to learn how to skate, and it's unsafe for them. And they would also like a street course, which would include like benches or rails, which we're, we would try to see if we would be able to get donated to us. And I feel like if we put a street course out there, they wouldn't be drawn to skateboarding in the city and possibly damaging any property. And then we would also like to get lights out there so that people who can't skate during the day, they can go out there at night. And we're also thinking about maybe having those on the timer so they'll shut off at a certain time. So I hope you take into consideration us being able to use skateboarding as a mode of transportation downtown in the roads and in the bike lanes and also expanding the skate park. Well, let me tell you the conversation we had tonight in our briefing, okay? If I understood this right, if I didn't, there's about seven or eight that'll correct me, okay? Fundamentally, you're welcome downtown. We don't want you on the sidewalk since you just said yeah. you don't want to be on the sidewalks anyway, so that's good, right? You're welcome to, to travel in the bike lanes, but that's what we want you to do. We want you to travel in the bike lanes. We want you to be considerate of other people, other citizens of and course. all that. Yeah. Some of you are, there's always a few bad apples and those few bad apples are making it hard on everybody else in your group. So maybe you can police, y'all can help police your own group because if people are doing what they're supposed to be doing downtown on skateboards and just coming through, traveling, getting from one place to other, you, you won't have a problem downtown. And you're always, we, we welcome everybody downtown. We did this downtown for everybody. We want everybody to be a part of it. And I think we love to see skateboards. That's a vibrant part of what we do. We don't really love you at two in the morning, but but you know we want to, we want you to be here. As far as the skateboard park, I think we've all said we love the skateboard. I, I never in my wildest dreams thought that skateboard park would be as successful as it is. I ride by there every day, and there's somebody out there every time I go, and sometimes five, ten people. So I think it's great, and I think it's a great venue for y'all to go. And I think certainly we take your ideas under consideration, and as we budget next year, maybe we try to do something else and just incrementally make it better. Um, because basically what we did there was, was very cheap, to be honest, considering what, yeah. what we got for what we did. So maybe we can continue to work that and, and try to make it better for y'all and, and make it where y'all want to go there to do your tricks, right, instead of our sidewalks. Oh, yeah, for okay. sure. And I think most of the kids who do want to do tricks wouldn't come downtown as much as skate if they had that because I ride a longboard, so I can't do tricks anyways. Okay. I, just, I just come down here to cruise around, okay. physical activity, hang out down here. I'm right. not, you know. You just need to encourage that amongst so. your other riders. Maybe everybody needs a long board. I don't know. But whatever you can do, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for coming. Would anybody else like to speak? I just knew you weren't going to sit and not come up. I was very concerned. Mm. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Good evening, Mayor, City City Council members. My name is Charles Wright. I just want to speak to you th tonight briefly. I did pass out a folder to highlight some of the things I wanted to address. I won't be able to address all of them, but I always like to pass out information sheets so anything I say is not misunderstood and you can get the full breadth of what I'm trying to share with you. The two things I want to address is the new Herman Park Center those plans is located on the right side of your folder. There's only a couple <laughs> items I just want to bring up tonight that I was particularly concerned about that maybe you should look at. I like to think you look at everything on there, but I would like to, you to look at is the present building that's there now 
has, is free of asbestos and lead paint. The building is 124 years old, so I think <coughs> we'd like to know before you build on to that if that's a plan. The type of sports, events, and activity that's planned for that building. The, the recreation director was not aware that there was gonna be any type of um, tournaments in that building. Will the new rec center be open to all Wayne County citizens? And fifth, has the city considered <coughs> revisiting the 2010 downtown recreation center where the land still exists, it was less money, more space, more amenities, and less congested. And if any city council member is uh, interested in that, I brought the plans that you could look at following this meeting. The next thing, uh, topic I like to address is the Goldsboro Tourist Council, which is on the left side of your sheet. And I remember a couple of weeks ago, if not months, a city council member asked if the Goldsboro Council had reached out to the Dillard alumni. Just a few weeks ago, my wife's church had a very large activity for four days, and 50 of the people had to obtain lodging in Wilson. And their activities are usually not over to 11 p.m. at night, and they had to travel to Wilson. And I asked the church, has the city ever reached out to you as a church group twice a year when they have these large events with people from out of town? And they said the last time the city reached out was in 2010. So what I drew up for you tonight that you see in your folders is a matrix. And what that matrix shows is each year in the amount of times each, in each year what subjects was talked about. And when you look at 2013 all the way down the bottom, you see that was the last time the Dillard alumni was talked about. That was the last time a school reunion was talked about. That was the last time a family reunion was talked about. And while that's important, that's supposed to be the mission, if you look on the right side, is a copy of what the Tourism Committee is supposed to do. And the Tourism Committee is supposed to do the exact things that they're not doing. So all I want to ask the city council to do is to look at that and if the city, if the tourism committee is going to stop looking at or reaching out to the Dillard alumni, church, family reunions, then make up a new sheet on your website and list what your objectives of the tourism committee are going to be. If it continues to, to go in the sports tourism, which it seems like the, the direction the city wants to handle, I would say, the t some of the tournaments, events, and activities definitely need to reflect the diversity of the city. As usual, I know it's not appropriate for you got gentlemen to ask questions, but I always stand available to answer any questions or concerns or comments you have. I usually, tr this usually takes about two to three weeks of research, and it's very hard and challenging to try to put all that into three minutes. Which piece of property were you, um talking about um, initially, because it's, I don't think that property exists anymore. Uh, that property still exists. It's on the corner of Center Street and Spruce and extends all the way over to James. It's 3.2 acres. Currently, there was an outfit out of Virginia that came and talked about that. And the city council voted to let the city manager mm -hmm. for uh, six months to do a feasibility study right. so that and each party can opt out if they want to yes. so that land is still available because it's it's nothing concrete about it at least to march so that's the land i'm talking about that's available that was the original land that was bought for four hundred fifty thousand dollars for the 2010 recreation center and i think our mayor was the only one <laughs> that knew about that at the time out of everyone that was here Mr. Wright, yes. Uh, may I ask what in, um, and and what uh, standard? When when did it uh, come to a situation where you're I guess in doing your research? When did it come in and saying that Dillard alumni didn't has not been touched or reached out? Because I know they uh, from the standing point when I spoke with the Dillard alumni and the members, uh, Mr. Packard, uh, Ms. Burden, Mr. Raymond Smith, Jr., uh, several others that were a part of Dillard alumni. Uh, they 
did not reach out to the city, and that was, and, and then I guess I'm, I'm, I guess I'm what I'm trying to find out is, are you specifically saying that the city did not reach out to them, or right. you're saying that the, I guess the downtown development corp did not reach out? What part of the city? The department did not reach to them. The Gold, Goldsboro Tourism Council is tasked with, if you look at the mandate, that's a, and your, the, their job is to do just that, to reach out to family and friends and reunions and class reunions. And if you look on the sheet, now what I'm going by is what's in the minutes. I reviewed every month's minutes for the past four years of the Goldsboro Tourism Committee, and I put down 2013. That's the year I started with. So what I put down is how many times these subjects was discussed in the tourism. As a nurse and a legal person, I've learned if you don't write it and then document it, you didn't do it. So I'm assuming if they didn't talk about the Dillard alumni in 2014 and in 2015, and then I think it was one of your councilmen that said there wasn't any reach out in 2016, and all I want to say is through the findings and the research, the city hadn't reached out until, until the last time the city reached out or talked about it in the Goldsboro <coughs> Forum Council was in 2013. And that was the same with a class reunion, and it was also the uh, same with a family reunion. So it looked at, at that point, from looking at the minutes, it looked like we move away from that mission onto the mission of hosting and reaching out to have some type of sports tournaments here. But when I looked at that, you know, I really felt bad because it looks as though our city in 2014 was more interested, at least that tourism council, was more interested in sponsoring a mud run that might bring who knows who, but sponsoring a mud run then reaching out to Dillard alumni, other churches that's having big reunions and events, other family reunions, and that bothered me. So that's why I prepared that for the council so they can look at an objective piece of research and form their own opinions. Thank you for your comments you. and your time. And Thank, your you. Work with Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. G-L-I-S-S-O-N, 135 South Center Good evening, sir. Good evening. I'd like to address a couple of things that uh, y'all talked about during your working uh, session that I attended earlier. Uh, it was rather a little late, but I caught most of it. Uh, we're talking about parking uh, from our parking study and uh, what we could do to improve our parking. Uh, and I'm a business owner just like uh, Antonio here, uh, downtown on Center Street, and I know that's where our problem is. Uh, I would like for you to look at uh, a time parking. I would think a two hour parking would be great. Uh, that gives people uh, two hours to come in, have dinner, whatever they want to at a restaurant, and make it at uh, you know six o'clock. Most places close up at six o'clock down there. Uh, and uh, you know have a time parking up until that point in time, maybe from eight to, eight to uh, six in the afternoon or something like that. Uh, and I think that what might help us down there. Uh, I know you said earlier, Mayor, that uh, employees, uh, people that are working downtown, pull right up in front of a place of business and park and uh, stay there all day, which, uh, you know, we have lost parking uh, and everything. So I try to keep my vehicles off the street during business hours uh, for everybody else. The uh, second thing I'd like to talk about is uh, these guys that push this wood around downtown. <laughs> Only one person kind of wanted to talk about it. Uh, you have welcomed them. Uh, my wife and I both welcome them downtown also. It's great to hear people downtown. Uh, and it, to me, all hours of the night, uh, we see people sitting out in the, in the medians uh, talking, uh, playing chess or whatever at all hours, uh, and I would much rather hear a skateboard clunking down the street than a motorcycle with a loud muffler revving up, leaving a bar or something else. So uh, I haven't had any problems with the skaters. I haven't had any run-in with any of the skaters. They've always been very polite to my wife and I. Uh, if they were on the sidewalk, they would pop their boards up and let people pass. I've seen that, and uh, so I think it's great to have young people downtown. 
That's why we did this. So I'd like for, you know, extend the park that they're asking about, put some lights out there, maybe build some rails like the young lady said, so that your tricksters are playing down there and not damaging our places downtown. Of course, there's not a lot of places to do tricks right down on Center Street. There's not much, <laughs> not much jumping to go on. So uh, if you would just consider that, expanding the park a little bit in the future, I know it can't be done tomorrow, uh, and then allow them, like you say, to pass through uh, and skate downtown. Uh, I think it's a, it's nice to see people downtown. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Would anybody else like to speak? Anybody else? Are you get, are you coming to speak? I wish you would, come on. How are you tonight? Doing good. You have a long board or a short board? Oh, it's short. It's the skateboard. So you're one of these guys jumping on the sidewalks? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Um, I didn't really prepare anything because this was last notice, but I'm sort of here for the expansion of the skate park. I was here like a year and a half, maybe two years ago. I was with Kevin Gillespie when we asked right. first initially to build the skate park. I don't know if any of you guys else were here for that. <laughs> but, I mean, it was successful, and I appreciate like the what you guys did for us, and a lot of people go out there, like I still go out there. It's very fun and everything, but I guess essentially to blanket skateboarding, there's two types, street skateboarding and um, like vert skateboarding with the ramps. And uh, when I, I guess the street skateboarding aspect is like ledges, what you're talking about, messing up the, you know, jumping downstairs, messing up the ledges, which I understand like with the downtown aspect, I think longboarders should be allowed and everything to cruise around. But like I can see what you guys are talking about, damaging the uh, property and whatnot. This is why I'm asking for an expansion so we can have ledges, like street uh, street objects to skate on, I guess. Because right now we only have a rail, and that was from Seymour Johnson, and it's sort of like, it's messed up because it goes like this and it goes like straight down. So it's hard to use, and then we have the bench that goes up. And it's really fun and everything, but I mean, I guess there's just not enough obstacles to choose from. I mean, we have like quarter pipes and then the rails. So I guess just like a few more things, maybe a concrete ledge a better hip, which is like the concrete things. It goes like this, and then this. <laughs> Take your word for it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe stairs. And I, we talked about it with Scott Barnard, the Parks and Rec Director, whenever we first got it going. And he was down for the expansion. We were going to use certain obstacles, buy certain other ones, but it never went through, I guess. I guess the budget wasn't right at the time. But it's been like maybe, how long has the park been around? A year and a half? Probably two years. Now. Two years. Yeah, yeah. So I was just, you know, if you guys were open to expansion, a lot of people want it. And there's a lot more street skateboarders and bird skateboarders out there. I think it'd be a worthy investment on all baths. Okay. Well, our, my pledge to you is this. If you and your group will police your riding downtown and stay to the bike lanes like we've asked, stay off our sidewalks, our benches and all that, we certainly as a council will look at what we can do to improve your park. I mean, I think you know it's great. We want you to do that. We want you to be a part of the community, but we just want all of us to coexist, right? Yes, sir. So y'all need to police yourselves so we don't have to. And that makes us all get along better. Okay? Yes, sir. But we will definitely work with you to see what we can do in the park and make the park better. I, mean, I think the park's a great thing and, and we do need to continue. I will tell you now and just focus, government does not move fast. Okay, so yes, we sir. might be having this conversation again next year, but know that we will work on it. Okay, and we'll see what we can do to, to, to make that a priority for you. Okay, yes, sir. Okay, Thank but you. young man, what, young man, what you could do is you could think outside the box. You can do some fundraisers, and and you probably can move a whole lot quicker. You know, um, I just, you know, you're very polite. Um, unfortunately, who I bumped into the skaters, they weren't so polite this particular day. But, I, you know, we, we want you guys to enjoy yourself. We want you guys to have something to look forward to. But think about a fundraiser, you know? Think about a fundraiser. It'll probably move a lot quicker. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Your time. Thank you. Have a good night, you. Anybody else like to speak? It looks like he's coming to speak about skateboarding, too, doesn't he? Yes. <laughs> Very committed group. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, sorry about my dress. I know it's not the most, it's not the nicest, but uh, 
I've He's never seen a skateboard in a coat and tie, so you're okay. Yeah. But I'm also, not only am I a skateboarder, but I'm also a small business owner and a resident of downtown. Great. And I want to lend my support to those who skate downtown. I know I've heard everything you've said. I, I love it. That you guys are trying to make strides to improve the, the park. Are you open to listening to that? Um, as far as fundraising goes, they've approached myself as a business owner, and we've reached out to Parks and Rec to see how we can contribute money to expanding the park and getting at least lights up out there. Um, and going back to being a business owner and a resident of downtown, I, I love that they're down here. It, like, I think like David was saying, it's, it's a nice part of the community. It shows, it's almost like a community watch to some extent. I mean, they are out here at all hours. They've never disturbed me, whether as an owner of a business or when I'm trying to sleep. Um, they're all, they've all been very friendly to me, and they've all, been, they've all brought business as well, uh, not only to my establishment, but to others in the area. Um, I just hope that you all listen to them and can, can give them some mercy, I guess, in ex sure. extending the park and uh, letting them continue to skate downtown. As I said, as I know you said, you, it's only the sidewalk, which is totally fine, because skateboarding on bricks is not fine. Anyways, Good deal. So, thank you for your time. I do have one question, and I shouldn't even open this conversation, but I'm going to, if y'all can answer me, what would be the number one thing you'd want in the park? Can y'all answer that quickly? Ledges. Ledges? Uh, what? That's, like a street corner. More, more of like, just like things you would see, like maybe in the streets. Okay. Like ledges or, or we could probably um, get to one of the parks and just pick some benches up and put out there. Does that work? That could work, like a bench or two, and then, uh, yeah, it's like he was saying a concrete ledge. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Well, All right thank well, you very much. Did we got some of our parks folks here, so they're hearing what you say. That's oh, why I wanted to Okay, thank you. Yeah. You know, as far as <clears throat> young people hanging out in downtown Goldsboro, I'm 66 years old, and I can tell you, when I was 16, we hung out right in front of City Hall on Saturday and Sunday afternoons. So it's nothing new. Look, look how you turned out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're digressing now. Would anybody else like to talk? Okay, if not, we're going to close the public comment period and we'll move on to presentations. And we've got the Wayne County Senior Softball Team. Who do we have? There they are. I knew I recognized you, I just couldn't figure out who you were. <laughs> now I got it. Well, come on up. Tell us about your season. Well, uh, Goldboro. Uh, well, introduce yourself first. Uh, Mike Trujillo, and this is Willard Whit Whitworth. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> we played in a Rocky Mountain League now for three years, playing Rocky Mountain teams and Wilson teams. And unfortunately, they let us in three years ago. They haven't won yet. So we've taken all three conference championships and won the tournament championship this year. So, like I said, they, we have a good softball team of all seniors, 50, 60 and 70 years of age. And they play rough and they play tough. They were champions when they were young 30, 40 years ago, and they're still champions. And that's basically what we do. All right, well, then we're gonna to try to work with you next year to try to get some of this to Goldsboro, right? Okay, we'll, we'll appreciate that. We'll, we'll get with Scott and, and the folks and see what we can come up with. I appreciate okay. that. All right, glad y'all had a great season. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we got the presentation and the letter of appreciation from the Veterans and Patriots Coalition. Vic, you doing, all y'all doing that? You doing that? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, when we travel, we travel as the coalition. That's perfectly <laughs> fine with me. Good evening, uh, uh, Mayor, City Councilman, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, August 5th, we had our fifth annual Purple Heart Banquet, and uh, we could not have done it. Today, this year was probably our best year. We were sold out, um, standing room only, so to speak. Um, and that was, uh, and we're looking forward to expanding next year. And then obviously when the Agricultural Convention Center gets built, we're gonna get a lot bigger. So, yeah. but of course we could not have done it um, tonight. Actually, sorry. We have our president of the coalition, Bill Graham. Everybody knows him. Uh, <laughs> Vice president here, Melissa Watkins. Uh, our chaplain, Bill Boyd. Uh, we got Jim Brewer over here to my left, and we have uh, Carol Overton here and myself. So uh, we could not have done it without supporters uh, uh, from the uh, Wayne County Commissioners and the City Council like yourself. So without further ado, if I can, Bill, would you uh, would like to read that, please? I didn't bring my glasses. Down. <laughs> Someone read it for Bill. No. <laughs> read, read it, guys. <laughs> Well, listen. The Goldsboro Wayne Purple Heart Foundation Certificate of Appreciation presented to the City of Goldsboro. 
for your dedicated support and contribution afforded to the honor of those that have borne the battle and have suffered the wounds of war. The fifth annual Goldsboro Wayne Purple Heart Banquet, 5 August 2016. Signed, Bill Graham, Chairman, Goldsboro Wayne Purple Heart Foundation. Well, since Councilmember Broadway went to the Purple Heart Banquet, I'm gonna let him come out there and, t and receive it. All right. And, uh, and I'm gonna come take a picture because I don't see where my photographer is tonight. And, and I would like oh. to oh, 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 oh. that uh, Councilman Broadway is co-chair with this uh, okay. annual event. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Bill Bill's turn back to the photographer. Can you turn around right there? Oh, what is that? Yeah, the mayor. I just, I'm going to talk. Now, you get right in there. Yeah. Yeah. You get right here. I was coming to make y'all get together. Super Sunday. You can't get that, get that close to that many Marines. Oh. <laughs> you got them, Liz? Got a wide angle there. <laughs> yeah, I'll get in there now. Oh, 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 hold on. I won't make a picture look good. Talk. All right. <laughs> We got the Golden Star Award recipient, and there's Miss Fleck. Good evening, Mayor Council. Good evening. Um, tonight we're coming to recognize our August um, Golden Star Award recipients. We have one group, and we have two individual uh, recipients that we'll be doing. So first, we'll start off uh, with our um, couple guys from our fire department. We have uh, Jamie Howe, Kevin Massey, and Brad Bradley Peel, but I think Bradley wasn't able to be here tonight. Okay. I'd like to ask those guys to come forward, and also Bert Sherman. Bert uh, recommended our guys for uh, for the Star Award, so if Bert would come up and just give us a brief um, summary of the presentation. <laughs> Good evening, folks. Good evening. Um, we had a, uh, a skater problem uh, over at the waste treatment plant. And uh, what it was was an antenna, which was about, I would say, almost, what, 60, 70 feet in the air? OK. Uh, none, of, none of the equipment over the city didn't have a cherry picker truck to get in that, that high, OK? So I called uh, Chip Sasser. Chief Sasser, and he sent these guys out there, okay? Now these guys are normally saving lives, putting out fires, training all the time. The reason why I put them in there, because this was something that was out of the ordinary type thing. They actually guided me up there. I did the work, but these guys are the ones that supported me up there. I've never been that high in my life. Not, not at roller coasters or anything. They made sure that I was strapped in. They, they actually assist, they, <laughs> they also asked if they wanted me, them to do the work. And I said, no, I'll take care of it. But uh, I was up there uh, at 60, 70 feet in the air. From the ground, it doesn't look that high. But when you get up on that ladder, the butterflies start. So I had one guy in the back, he was making sure that I, I was safe. I had another guy running the, 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 uh, the ladder itself, and another guy watching him. Uh, they worked like a great team. And I just thought that, that doing that aspect just for us, the things that they do for the city, yeah, these, these are the, uh, how would I want to put, the, the hidden things that these guys do. And I just wanted to say, not just the award, but just a round of applause because this is this is your city right here. These guys, okay? That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's Thank you. Thank you. you probably ought to get one for getting up in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> That's for Jane. No. <laughs> yeah. That's for her. Yeah. Well, hold on, we got to the right. Come here. Where's my? Come here. <laughs> Probably 
Mayor, Council, thank you very much for this opportunity to brag about one of our staff members. Uh, my nominee is Mr. Antonio Torres, who was, uh, uh, he's a park, uh, senior park technician, who, uh, who of course was working inside the golf course pro shop when they moved into the uh, event center. Uh, he was putting up some wall treatments at the time and was approached saying, geez, this air conditioner is making an awful lot of noise and we've got a, a wedding this Saturday. And we can't really have that with all this noise with the air conditioner running. We've had a vendor here to take a look at it. They can't do anything for us to help us out. Antonio said, let me take a look at that. And he took the thing apart, found a bearing that was all worn out and gave me a call and said, John, I, I, I can fix this. I said, okay. We got the part overnighted. He put it in the next day. Quiet as quiet could be. And, and furthermore, he went to the welder at the complex and had a shim made because the shaft was worn badly. So he moved it out a little bit so it was sitting on good metal. Worked like a champ. And then he said, you know what? This motor, it's got bearings going in it too. Being an old motor, I think that system's got to be 30 years old. I don't know. Uh, we took it down and had new bearings put in, and it is quiet as quiet can be, and I bet it lasts another 20 years. Antonio's my nomination for the Golden Star Award, and I'm very proud to present him to you tonight. Thank you Good. very much. Thank you. All right, Antonio, you know what to do. All right, <laughs> yes, smile. Wow. That's great. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you might want to pass out your phone number to all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go too far, Mayor. Our next recipient is uh, Clayton Williams, Jr. Second time winner, James Chester. If you'll come up and give a brief presentation. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, good evening. Uh, Mr. Clay, uh, Clayton Williams. Uh, we had two police cars. One caught fire and one was damaged in an accident. Uh, Clayton came up to me and said, you know, boss, uh, I think I can repair that and save us some money. I looked at the two cars, one was badly damaged from fire, and one was badly damaged from an accident. I said, Clayton, if you charge the motivated, and you can make it safe and save the, uh, the city some money, go do it. <clears throat> a couple days later, he come back, I'm actually walking around, watching over his shoulder. He's putting it together. He said, boss, I need some more parts. He put it together, we saved a couple thousand dollars. Uh, final check was me walking around, making sure it's safe. Uh, talked with the uh, <clears throat> liaison with the police department, Mr. Ryan Barry. Said, take it out, let's run it, let's get it lined up, and let's see where it goes. He saved us a lot of money. Uh, police department, they have another vehicle. Uh, the damaged vehicles took two, made one. And we can pretty much sell the shell. So we saved the city a lot of money. And that's why I nominated Mr. Clayton Williams. Uh, 
Come on, get in here with us. <laughs> Maybe somebody can help make a picture like this. Okay. I want to take a minute. I think Faye and Scott will attest. I do want to say one thing. The reason we did this is because we wanted to recognize employees that go above and beyond. And I think every time we've had one, it just shows how good our employees are in the city of Goldsboro, how much they care, how smart they are. And we really do have a lot of good people. So I just want to thank all of you for your, your part. And we want this is a, this is about the funnest thing I do is make. So it's great. <laughs> so I really do appreciate that. And I want that to spread through our whole working community. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Mayor Council. Oh, Mayor, can we get one more with you, John and Antonio? Sorry. We didn't get the root shot. I'm already in the fire. I'm working on my house. I'm not even letting it out of my mind. This is important work. Okay, with that, we will move to the consent agenda. Mr. Manager. Mayor Council, your consent agenda, you removed or deferred items E and F, so your consent agenda consists of items G through T. Again, your consent agenda is items G through T. All right, we got items G through T to approve. Motion that we approve items uh, G through T. I second that motion. Any uh, questions, comments? All right, if not, we'll have a roll call back. Allen? Yes, ma'am. Yes. 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 Okay, the consent agenda is approved. Uh, next, we have items requiring individual action, and there are none. So we'll move to the city manager report. Mayor Council, I have several items I'd like to share with you. One, I'm a little tardy on. I would sort of take it for granted that we're going to get this, but we did receive notice. A certificate of achievement for excellence in financial reporting has been awarded to the city of Goldsboro by the Government Finance Officers Association of the United States and Canada for its comprehensive annual financial report. The certificate is an achievement of the highest form of recognition in the area of governmental accounting and financial reporting, and its attainment represents a significant accomplishment by a government and its management. An award of financial reporting achievement has been awarded to the individuals, department, or agency designated by the government as primarily responsible for preparing the award-winning CAFR, and this has been presented to K. A. Scott, Director of Finance. And I just say that to share that we expect to receive that, but I do want to recognize that Kay and her staff are doing an excellent job of keeping us in the appropriate accounting standards. I just want to th thank her and her staff for the work that they do for us. Um, the second item I'd like to mention, we do have our Beak Week celebration going on, and all the, the majority of the events are Friday and, and um, September 9th and Saturday, September 10th. There are events that are starting all week long with the scavenger hunt, so beginning yesterday, actually, September 5th, a scavenger hunt all week long with the Arts Council. Uh, there's a chicken chase community fun walk beginning uh, September 7th, Wednesday evening, 6 to 8 p.m., uh, Thursday, September 8th, there's a foul play softball game at the Boys and Girls Club at 6.30 p.m. And again, a lot of events through Friday and Saturday. And I would just invite the community to be involved and check online or call our office. We'll be happy to share the list of events that are occurring. And then finally, I would ask uh, if Ms. Tracy Davis would come up and let me just introduce her. Uh, I am excited tonight to introduce Tracy Davis as our Marketing and Communications Director. Ms. Davis is in the position that is jointly funded by the city and county that we had discussed several months ago. She spent most of the day with the county commissioners and we'll make up our time with her later in the week. She's had a couple hours with us today. Ms. Davis is an Eastern Wayne graduate, so Goldsboro and Wayne County are her home. She holds a BA in Political Science and a Master of Public Administration, both from UNC Wilmington. Her work experience is impressive. She has been a plan, uh, planning and parks director, a deputy town manager, a town manager, and most recently served as communications director for the city of Fayetteville. She came highly recommended to us and she knows local government. And I think George and I, or the county manager, were both very impressed with that. We felt very fortunate to find somebody with Tracy's qualifications, desire to be here in Goldsboro and Wayne County, and just want to let you see her this evening and you'll be seeing more of her as we go forward in time. So with that, Tracy, welcome. If you have any comments you'd like to make, you're welcome. Uh, but not required to at this time. Well, thank you for your kind words, sure. and I look forward to the great opportunity you had, and I'm happy to be home. Happy to have you. Welcome. 
And Mayor and Council, that's all I have for that's you. That's it. Mr. Attorney? No report. All right. Under the Mayor and Councilman reports, first we've got a resolution endorsing the Wayne County Board of Education designation of Goldsboro High School as a restart facility. And I think Councilmember Aycock, you're going to read that? Yes. Whereas on May 5th, 2016, the North Carolina Board of Education approved Goldsboro High School as a restart model. And whereas the Wayne County Board of Education then approved Goldsboro High School as a restart high school because it would offer Goldsboro High School greater calendar and scheduling flexibility, more curriculum opportunities, and increased access to resources and learning opportunities, which include access to Wayne Community College courses and programs, and whereas it is the belief of the Goldsboro City Council that making Goldsboro High School a restart school will further engage students in their academic careers, and whereas it is the belief of the Goldsboro City Council that making Goldsboro High School a restart school will be an immediate and large-scale change to how teaching and learning can take place at Goldsboro High School, which will establish a culture of high expectations that is embraced by students, parents, teachers, administrators, and the supportive community. And whereas it is the further belief of the Goldsboro City Council that making Goldsboro High School a restart facility will increase student proficiency to exceed the state average meet or exceed the state four-year cohort graduation rate and reduce the dropout rate to below the state average. And whereas it is to believe for the Goldsboro City Council that making Goldsboro High School a restart facility will expand Goldsboro High School's robust academic partnership with the command and personnel at Seymour Johnson Air Force Base in keeping with Wayne County as a national military friendly designation. And whereas it is the further belief of the Goldsboro City Council that designating Goldsboro High School as a restart facility will provide all students at the school with a meaningful opportunity for a sound basic education to prepare the students fully for post-secondary education and or productive employee. Now therefore, let it be a resolved that the Goldsboro City, that the City Council of the City of Goldsboro, North Carolina, that the Mayor and City Council approve and endorses the Wayne County Board of Education's designation of Goldsboro High School as a restart facility and encourage the students, parents, teachers, administrators, and community to fully support this effort of the Wayne County Board of Education to enhance public education in Wayne County. This resolution shall be incorporated into the official minutes of the City of Goldsboro and be in full force and effect from <coughs> this and after this sixth day of September 2016. You want to make a motion to approve it? Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the resolution for Goldsboro High School. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Yeah. All those that say aye. 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 The resolution passes. And next we have a resolution expressing appreciation of service rendered by Gerald Nipple as an employee of the City of Goldsboro for more than 17 years. It's resolution number 2016-64. <coughs> Whereas Gerald Nipple retired on September 1, 2016 as an operator for with the Public Utilities Department at the Water Treatment Plant of the City of Goldsboro with more than 17 years of service. Whereas Gerald began his career on September 2, 1998 as a Water Plant 1 operator with Public Utilities at the Water Treatment Plant of the City of Goldsboro. Whereas on September 8, 1999, Gerald was promoted to Water Plant Operator 3 within the Public Utilities Department at the Water Treatment Plant of the City of Goldsboro. Whereas on July 27, 2005, Gerald was promoted to water, water Plant Operator 4 with the Public Utilities Department at the Water Treatment Plant of the City of Goldsboro, where he has served until his retirement. Whereas Gerald has proven himself to be a dedicated and efficient public servant who has gained the admiration and respect of his fellow workers and the citizens of the City of Goldsboro. Whereas the Mayor and the City Council of the City of Goldsboro are desirous on behalf of themselves and other city officials and employees and the citizens of the City of Goldsboro of expressing to Gerald Nipple their deep appreciation and gratitude for the service rendered by him to the city over the years. Now, th now therefore, be it resolved by the Mayor and City Council of the City of Goldsboro, North Carolina, that, one, we express to Gerald Nipple our deep appreciation and gratitude for the dedicated service rendered during his tenure with the City of Goldsboro. We offer Gerald our very best wishes for success, happiness, prosperity, and good health in his future endeavors. This resolution shall be incorporated to the official minutes of the City of Goldsboro and shall be in full force and effect from and after this, the sixth day of September 2016. I offer this for adoption. So moved. Any discussion? All those say aye. Aye. Motion carries. All right, so now we'll go with uh, board member comments. Mr. Acock? 
Um, the only thing I have to say is about what Ms. Shirley Edwards was saying and also the other lady about opportunities for our young people for jobs. I remember teaching at Goldsboro High School back in the 70s and early 80s and we used to take field trips to manufacturing jobs in Goldsboro and Wayne County. And there were several industries that we'd visit. Every one of those industries are gone now and so are the jobs. We, we lost them from the 80s till now and I don't know where we're gonna get the employment from. And that's, we're one of, we're one of thousands of communities who are competing for the same industries. And you know, what we've got to have is, we've got to have an educated workforce who are capable of doing these jobs and everybody can't go to college. And we gotta train these kids to work. We gotta teach these kids to have values and have dreams. They don't have dreams anymore. They're stuck and they know it. And I feel for them. And I feel for them. Yeah. Mr. Foster? No comment. Mr. Ham? No, sir. Mr. Williams? Um, I just wanna, um, I hope everyone had a good uh, Labor Day weekend. Um, I got an opportunity to go to Laurenburg, um, North Carolina, and they had a team of festival, and it was some friendly people. Uh, I wish I would have got the opportunity to meet some of the council there, um, but it was a great event. It was very educational for um, our, um, the black citizens there. They got educated on a lot of things. Um, it's so important to know self, and that's what I got an opportunity to see there. And I also want to thank um, Everyone that sent sympathy cards for me, um, I lost my sister, um, and I, I just really appreciate people reaching out to me, and you know, just caring. Thank you. That's it. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. Rowland. Mr. Mayor, I just have one thing, and I just want to say something about the Veterans Coalition, Bill Graham, and those guys. They do a lot of things behind the behind uh, the the stage. One of the things they do is a stand down for homeless veterans. They fill Herman Park Center, that big one, with coats, sleeping bags, opportunities. Doctors are there. They, they sponsor that. They sponsor the laying the wreaths on veterans' graves at Christmas. They, they do that. They do the Purple Heart. 400 people sat down to eat at a Purple Heart and recognized 75 recipients of Wayne County veterans. And the last thing, and what I think is really good, they take a pig cooker and, and give those, go down to Camp Lejeune to the Wounded Warrior Battalion, and it's big. It's about 300, 350 men and women down there, and they take a barbecue, and they have a, a really nice thing. People don't see what these guys do, but thank goodness we have people that do that. That's all I have. Mr. Stevens? All right. Thank you. I got uh, two things to say and speak about. I want to say thank you to all the individuals and uh, organizations that helped out with the school supply drive. I was able to push forward for Dillard Middle, and uh, we were able to take over, I think, two SUV loads of uh, school supplies for that school. And also going into and pushing into my next the topic, and this is reiterating what uh, Council Member Acock was saying, is that I see every day, whether it's in District 3, District 4, District 1, or North End, where, however you want to say it, I see all parts of this city that are being detrimentally touched by crime and things, and I look at it in a whole as I always come back to education is the key to ridding ourselves of crime. Without education, there cannot be no stamp on ending poverty, ending crime, ending drug dealings, or whatever, what's safe, what so forth. Um, I want to specifically say in regards to training and for our young ones and the ones who are out there and the young men who seem to 
be getting in these problems and recurring, um, I know that it's hard. I know that there is, as we say, as the system has put a stamp on you with the felonies and things, that it's even harder for you to find jobs. But you still have a way to get around it if you take the chance and go to finding a way to get into education. And now I want to specifically say that Wages has their men's youth group that I've been invited to and I'm gonna start going to more and more regularly to try to motivate those young men to get them to go back to school. And there's, I don't know why, there's so many grants and loans that are out there for them to get educated and push them forward. So we want to get them out there and we want to get them to see education is the only way that you're gonna get past anything that you got in the street or anything that you get in the street. It's the only way that you're gonna make it in this world is through education. And that's what I have to say for tonight. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, I got three things. So on the informational side, if, just in case somebody doesn't know, I do want folks to be sure they're aware that uh, last week we had an anonymous donor come up and offer five more thousand dollars on the Maddox murder case. So now that's an $11,000 payout and somebody in this city or somebody around this city knows who did that. And it would really be nice to bring that closure to that family. So I just want to remind folks that it's out there, anything we can do to get any leads on any of these murders to the police department is good. But that one does have a special additional $5,000 to it through Crime Stoppers. So I just want to be sure that's on the street and everybody knows that. I do want to take a minute and Tracy and welcome you again. This city and this county, we have a lot of marketing and a lot of messaging to be doing. So we look forward to having you on board. I think I think it'll be a really positive experience on both sides. So, so we do look forward. And then lastly, I do just want to take a minute. Tonight, we had unusually good public comment. It was Ms. Edwards, Ms. Smith, Mr. Wright, the skateboarders. We don't usually have this much engagement from the public. And there were some really good, thoughtful thoughts in what was said. So I do appreciate it. A lot of what you say we already know, we already work on. Some of it you don't think we're working on, we really are. Some of it we need to work on harder. But more than anything, I think that what we need to do is we need to send a message of hope. And I think that this council believes in this city. I think the, through the staff and the council, we're trying to do some good things. And we just need to keep communicating, we need to keep working, and we, we need to let folks know that there is hope. So I do thank y'all for your comments, and we look forward to continue the conversation and continue the dialogue. Anybody got anything else? On the thought, we stand adjourned and thank everybody for coming.